I right now we're witnessing my greatest fear. Probably the reason that I started doing the the coronavirus podcasts. And now I'm trying to get back into the hey, let, you know, doesn't matter whether coronavirus is here or not. We've just got to keep moving forward. Yeah. But mobs form, right? And they form oh, yeah. because they're afraid. They are feel pinned in. They feel like they want to have some sort of catharsis. And then you have inciting incidences. However, you think that that happened. And you have the the chemicals are all in the same spot for explosions to happen, and yeah. uh, that's what it seems like is is happening. You've got this situation where if you're in the in the politics seat and you want to make sure that the eyes aren't focused on did we overreact to this, now you're going to start heading towards that that mob to keep the to to change the narrative. Yeah. But I think we have to, because if we don't push back on this quite forcefully, they're going to do it again. They're going to do it every cold season. This thing's going it, it, to, flu is going to come around again. So is, so is, and the numbers the CDC just put out was like 0.26% fatality rate. That's not too different than the flu, right? Maybe 2X. And the CDC is saying that. That's not, that's not like some scientist off in the corner doing models that everyone's questioning the peer review on. That's like, you know, the CDC coming out who everyone was accusing early on of being incompetent uh, and not with the game, but even their numbers are, are coming down that low. So um, this is gonna come again if we don't stop and tell people and demonstrate that this is not the way to manage a pandemic. You, you cannot have the, uh, these lockdowns because there are all these unforeseen consequences that can be really destructive to the economy. And that does, it's not just money, those are lives that are actually getting destroyed be, due, due to livelihood issues. Um, so I, I think it's important that we continue to speak out about this because uh, it will repeat itself. And um, there, there, there isn't science behind a lot of these numbers. I think there is a propensity for the political class to grab models that fit their story and run with them. Uh, and that's clearly, uh, I, I think that, I think since we, uh, I, I can't remember what ha- whether Ferguson's um, behavior was public back when we last spoke, but you know, this no, is the uh-uh. No, 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 no. We spoke a long time before that. Yeah, so he, he clearly didn't believe his own models. <laughs> so tell the story. Tell tell who he he was for anybody that wasn't really uh, so watching. So Ian Ferguson, uh, Imperial College of London. Um, he has a history of of doom and gloom models. Uh, I think they used some of his models for bovine encephalitis, uh, and they ended up slaughtering millions of pigs. Uh, um, they also used um, his models for one other incident like this, and it, it was thought to be um, overblown. So they went back to the same guy who 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 cries chicken little the loudest. Uh, and in comes this two million uh, person prediction that um, uh, that that we're going to die in the United States. Now his code wasn't public. Uh, very recently, his code became public, uh, and it's a complete shamble. It's not reproducible. And that if you put the same number in twice, you get different numbers. Uh, and it was discovered that w- he he actually got COVID and was supposed to quarantine himself, and he didn't. Uh, he was found having an affair with somebody else's wife. Uh, right. All right. So here, here's the one where everyone else is getting locked down around the world because of this guy. And then he runs off and violates quarantine. He's like, well, I, you know, I, I thought I was past it and I had enough evidence to think that I was no longer contagious. I'm like, well, could you give everyone else that same freedom uh, that we can decide for ourselves <laughs> oh, what we think? Wow. All right. So um, the world is just on fire over what this person did. And th- those models didn't go through peer review. But of course, they got sucked up by a class of people that saw they could use this to institute new forms of power. Uh, and so th- that that's something we have to be really attentive to, that the political class magnifies power under pandemic circumstances, and we have to be really cautious about giving them, you know, giving into that. When we started talking about this as though it were a war, I became really uncomfortable because, you know, when, when you look at what wartime powers are designed to do, it's to say, you know, everything else stops except for the security of the overall nation. The individual citizens, even in that situation, not so protected from their own government. And so when we started saying this, it was like, wait a second, this is something we want to discuss. Like, yes, you have to have speed, but liberty is a real thing. And you guys are thinking it's something we can take for granted. We can take it away and we can give it back. We can take it away, we can give it back. That's not how liberty works. Because if people can grab your liberty, if they don't have to give it back, they won't. Well, that's what happened, right? The flatten the curve turned into waits for a vaccine. All right, it, it, the goalposts move pretty quickly. So it's already happened here. And everyone said, oh, don't worry about it. That's not gonna happen. They'll, they'll give you your liberty right back. It's supposed to be a couple weeks. I think Fauci's original 
a plan was something like a couple of weeks to flatten the curve. And, and now it's a couple of months. And now you see California talking about, well, phases one through phase four. And, and, uh, and then the CDC has language for how to open up a school that looks like you like, you know, the checklist for, 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 you know, taking off a plane. And, and this is insane. All the teachers I know are like, there's no way we're going to be able to educate kids when you, when you treat them like that. I mean, they're going to be completely obsessed with all the mask wearing and the protections in there. It's, it's just going to, uh, scare the daylights out, I think, all these children. So um, I, I fully agree with you there. there there's a really good um, podcast I point people to that Bob Murphy um, did on this that, that really changed my opinion on this because he went through the economics of a lot of war and demonstrates that in most cases, the country, if they're equal, somewhat equally matched in terms of population and perhaps power, the country that wins the war is the one that's the freest. Because in the end, a war is basically turning one's entire economy over into one purpose. And if you don't have an economy, you can't win that war. And so the United States was very effective early on in a lot of wars because it had the freest economy control compared to the very controlled ones. Wow. Uh, and so it's a very interesting dialogue about how um, the top-down command and control often backfires in war. And uh, he goes through some cases in, with U-boats in, in, um, uh, in England and how – Eventually, it was the citizenry that figured out, hey, we need to get food back and forth. We're going to start forming convoys to get these things across the ocean because it's going to be easier for us to, to protect them that way. That was something that the, the generals were against. Uh, but the, 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 the free market started to do it and were successful, and then they mimicked it in, in, into, the, into the military. So there are all of these attributes about free markets that – function far more effectively than, than this top-down command and control. And it's, it's even evident in the times of war, yet we've all been trained that, hey, when it's wartime, it's time to kill the economy and have one guy in charge. Uh, well, you do that to an extreme, you're going to lose the war. Uh, and I think we're losing the war in COVID right now because of it. <laughs>